Hi there, this is Attorney Chata Olivas Quinto, and welcome to another episode of Law Lectures. Our topic for today is pretrial in criminal cases. What is the purpose of pretrial? Pretrial is conducted for the purpose of simplifying the issues in a criminal case. The parties will come up with admissions and stipulations to see what matters will no longer be contested. In this way, the issues will be well defined. For example, if the accused raises the defense of self-defense in a homicide case, this means that the accused is admitting that he killed the supposed victim. So the fact of death of the victim can be stipulated upon, and there will be no need to present evidence on that. Because the defense is self-defense, the prosecution does not have to prove the fact of death. The parties can agree on a reverse trial. The defense will present evidence first. This can be agreed upon during pre-trial. Also, all evidence will be disclosed, the witnesses identified, and documents will be marked. This will avoid surprise during trial. What are the sources of the rules on pre-trial in criminal cases? We have Rule 118 of the Rules of Court and the Revised Guidelines for Continuous Trial in Criminal Cases, that is, Administrative Matter 15-06-10-SC. Is pretrial mandatory in criminal cases? The answer is yes. It is mandatory in all criminal cases cognizable by the Sandigan Bayan, Regional Trial Court, Metropolitan Trial Court, Metropolitan Trial Court in Cities, Municipal Trial Court, and Municipal Circuit Trial Court. Are the parties required to submit pre-trial briefs in criminal cases? The answer is no. Pre-trial briefs are mandatory in civil cases but not in criminal cases. How about for cases covered by the rules on summary procedure? Is pre-trial mandatory? Yes. In criminal cases, pre-trial conference is mandatory. This is stated in the rules on expedited procedures in the first level courts or Administrative Matter 08-8-7-SC. It will be conducted in accordance with a pre-trial procedure under the revised guidelines for continuous trial in criminal cases. When does pre-trial take place? It takes place on the same date as the arraignment. The date depends on whether the accused is detained or not. If the accused is detained, it will take place within 10 calendar days from the date the court receives the case. If the accused is not detained, it will take place within 30 calendar days from the date the court acquires jurisdiction over a non-detained accused, either by arrest or voluntary surrender. This is unless a shorter period is provided by special law or by Supreme Court Circular. What happens during pre-trial? A. Plea bargaining B. Stipulation of facts C. Marking for identification of evidence of the parties D. Waiver of objections to admissibility of evidence E. Modification of the order of trial if the accused admits the charge but interposes a lawful defense and F. Such other matters as will promote a fair and expeditious trial of the criminal and civil aspects of the case. What is plea bargaining and what happens during plea bargaining? Plea bargaining takes place when the accused desires to enter a plea of guilty to a lesser offense. Can the accused plead guilty to any lesser offense? The answer is no. The offense he should plead guilty to should be a lesser offense that is necessarily included in the offense charged. This means that the elements of the lesser offense must be included in the elements of the offense for which he is charged. Can you give an example of this? Yes, let us say the charge is serious physical injury and the accused wants to plead guilty to the charge of less serious physical injury. Under Article 263 of the Revised Penal Code, any person who shall wound, beat, or assault another shall be guilty of the crime of serious physical injuries if in consequence of the physical injuries inflicted, 
the person shall have been ill or incapacitated for the performance of the work in which he was habitually engaged for a period of more than 90 days. On the other hand, the elements of the crime of less serious physical injuries are, number one, that the offender inflicted physical injuries upon another, and number two, that the physical injuries inflicted either A. Incapacitated the victim for labor for 10 days or more but not more than 30 days, or B. The injuries required medical assistance for more than 10 days. The elements of the lesser offense are necessarily included in the elements of the more serious offense which the accused is charged of. In this case, he can enter into a plea bargaining for the lesser offense. Is it at the option solely of the accused if he wants to enter into a plea bargain? The answer is no. The offended party in private crimes and the arresting officer in victimless crimes must give their consent with the conformity of the public prosecutor. Now, we said that the arresting officer must give consent to plea bargaining in victimless crimes. What are victimless crimes? These are crimes for which there is no private offended party, such as gambling and traffic violations. Should the information be amended before the accused can plead guilty to a lesser offense? The answer is no. There is no need for an amendment. And this is according to Section 2 of Rule 116. Who should be present during pre-trial? Ideally, the private complainant, the public prosecutor, the accused and his counsel should all be present. What happens if the private complainant or the accused are absent? The court shall proceed with the pretrial despite the absence of the accused and or private complainant. But two conditions must be present. One, they were duly notified of the pretrial. Two, counsel for the accused as well as the public prosecutor are present. What happens if the public prosecutor and or defense counsel are absent? The court may impose proper sanctions or penalties if they are absent. Two conditions must concur. One, they were duly notified of the pretrial, and two, they do not offer an acceptable excuse for being absent. Other than plea bargaining, what else may take place during pretrial? A. Plea bargaining. B. Stipulation of facts. C. Marking for identification of evidence of the parties. D. Waiver of objections to admissibility of evidence. E. Modification of the order of trial if the accused admits the charge but interposes a lawful defense. And F. Other matters that will promote a fair and expeditious trial of the criminal and civil aspects of the case. How are stipulations made and who should participate? Stipulations are made when one party, through counsel or the public prosecutor respectively, offer certain facts to be agreed upon by the parties. This is to dispense with a presentation of evidence for those facts that are admitted. The judge should actively participate in the proposals for stipulation. How is marking of evidence done? The prosecution and the defense counsel will present their documentary evidence in court. They will bring the original and photocopy for marking. They will compare the original with the photocopy, if the photocopy is to be marked. If the parties agree that the photocopy is a faithful reproduction of the original, there is no need to present the original during trial. What is required if the parties arrive at some admissions and agreements during pre-trial? Number one, all agreements or admissions shall be reduced in writing and signed by the accused and counsel. Otherwise, they cannot be used against the accused. Number two, the agreements covering the matters referred to in Section 1 shall be approved by the court. Section 1 are the matters that are covered during the pre-trial conference. What should the court do after the pre-trial proceedings are terminated? The court must issue a pre-trial order reciting the actions taken, the facts stipulated, and the evidence marked. What is the effect of the pre-trial order? Such order shall bind the parties, 
limit the trial to matters not disposed of, and control the course of the action during the trial, unless modified by the court to prevent manifest injustice. When will the court issue the pretrial order? The pretrial order shall immediately be issued and served upon the parties and counsel on the same day after the termination of the pretrial. Our video ends here for now, and I will see you at the to next video. To watch more videos that will help you in your studies and in life, subscribe to my channel. If you are a law student, you can read more about civil procedure in my virtual textbook, which you can find at www.profchato.com. And for inspiration, let me share my favorite Bible verse from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. This is Attorney Chato Olivas Quinto, making the law easier to understand.